everybody welcome back to another menu Monday we are currently still in Alabama we just went on a sightseeing trip today and I want to do an intro from my menu Monday you'll have seen the sightseeing last Thursday but I have four new um, meals for you so without further ado let's get to cooking this Today we're going to make a super simple dinner. Now I'm putting the ground sausage into the pan and we're going to cook that first. Now that the uh, sausage is cooking, we're going to make the sauce. It's a half cup of low sodium soy sauce. I use the liquid aminos. We're going to add garlic and ginger. All the ingredients again at the end of this clip and on our website, which will be linked down in the comment box below. Okay, we're removing the grease and now we're going to add the coleslaw. I didn't add the whole bag at once, but I did end up using the whole bag, so go ahead and put the whole thing in there. It looks like a lot, but it cooks down. So after we get our coleslaw in there, we're going to mix that up, then we're going to add the sauce, and then we'll let this cook over medium heat for about five minutes until your cabbage is cooked down. Once that's done, we can go ahead and serve it up. Now, this was absolutely delicious in the bowl, and we had a lot of it left over. So I had some egg rolls. I went ahead and rolled those up, Big Daddy and I ate a couple, and I sent them, uh, sent him to work with some on the side of the roll in a bowl. I hope you give this a try. It's really, really good. Your ingredients will be here at the end. Today I'm going to do an all-in-one pot meatloaf and mashed potatoes. I'm going to use the Instant Pot. The first thing I'm going to do is wash and cut up my potatoes and put them in the bottom. Now I'm going to salt and pepper the potatoes. I'm going to add a cup of water and then set the trivet on top with the pan that I'm going to put the meatloaf in. Now I will um, put a link on the website for these pans. They're great, but if you have a different kind of pan that will fit in there, you can use that too. I use these for pot and pot. I use them both at one time to cook two different things at once. They're really great. So here I am now, uh, the, the um, chopper here. I had so much trouble with it. First of all, I couldn't get the smaller thing in there and then the lid went, the thing you push on kept coming out. But Big Daddy figured it out for me and it's back to working. And I'm glad, I don't use it all the time, but when I'm using a lot of vegetables, or well here I'm using two, and I want them to be fine for the meatloaf, it's really great because everything's uniform. Thank you. 
Now we're going to put the rest of the ingredients in here. I'll have them listed at the end of this video and also on the website with the directions. And the link for that is going to be in the comment box below. Alright, I got my gloves on. We're going to mix all this together and we're going to shape ours into a round meatloaf just so it works with the pan. set this to cook for 25 minutes and then do a 10 minute natural release. After that you release any other pressure. You're going to take the meatloaf out, put it on a baking sheet, and I didn't film this because I forgot to do it, uh, is to put the topping on it which is uh, ketchup, mustard, and brown sugar. Ingredients at the end of the clip and on the website. I did remember after so I took it out put that on popped it back in the oven but we're just going to set that on broil in there and then work on our potatoes Okay, I took all the water out and then I added cream cheese and butter and a little milk and then we're going to mix this up and our dinner will be ready. Here are our plates. I just did some black eyed peas and all the ingredients will again be at the end of this clip and on the website with we'll link below in the comment box. Today we're making pasta primavera, however I'm going to add chicken, but this is original recipe was uh, vegetarian, so the chicken is optional along with, the, I made chicken broth, but you could use vegetable broth instead of the chicken broth to keep it vegetarian. So the first thing I'm going to do is cook my chicken. I did this ahead of time. So I just cut these breasts in half, butterfly horizontally. And then I went ahead and got them seasoned with some chicken seasoning and then put them in the oven until they were done. Next, I'm going to cook my pasta. Now the directions have you doing different things in different pots, but I wanted to use the induction cooktop here because it was a really hot day and I didn't want like two or three gas burners going. So um, you can use more if you have that option. So I'm getting the macaroni done first after I got that out. I left that in the drainer and now I'm going to cook the vegetables. You start with the peas and carrots, and once you cook those for a few minutes, you add in the broccoli.
now that the vegetables are cooked, we're going to go ahead and get them in on it in a bowl on the side. <laughs> again and then we're going to clean out this pan and we're going to use that to do our onions and garlic. I put in two tablespoons of butter. letting the onions and the garlic saute and then when that's ready we're going to add the chicken broth now I make my own so I'm just making that and we'll put that in and just leave it to cook until the chicken broth reduces now I had all the ingredients except for the lemon you're supposed to put the zest in here with the chicken broth and then after that's reduced and you add the um, whipping cream you're supposed to add three tablespoons of lemon juice I just left that out and at the end I added lemon pepper seasoning all right now that that's all in there we're going to add back our vegetables and then I'm going to cut up the chicken and get that in there object is to get everything heated through. We're adding some Parmesan cheese which is grated. Let's speed this up. Now I'm putting in the uh, pasta. Now this called for penne pasta but I just have regular macaroni noodles. It didn't take all of them so I saved them to make mac and cheese with the remainder that I didn't use. Here I'm going to add the lemon pepper seasoning and then I'm going to put the lid on and let everything heat through. This was a little bland for us. I'm not sure if it's because I didn't have the lemon so I suggest tasting and seasoning uh, you know to your to your liking so it was very good I mean the, the the pasta itself is really good I just felt it needed more seasoning but here's our finished plates and it made tons and here are your ingredients I hope you give it a try and let me know what seasonings you use if you do Today we're going to make some pulled pork in the slow cooker. It's going to be a hot day so I'm going to do it outside. The first thing however, you have to brown all the sides of your Boston butt. I chose a pork loin here because it was just Big Daddy and I and our Boston butt was huge. So I'm saving that when we have more people. The next thing you do is add the rest of the ingredients to the slow cooker. This is after you've browned everything. You can use your insert if it is stove top friendly, if not use a paint and then put everything in the crock pot. I did not have the camera on to add everything, but all the ingredients are going to be at the end of this clip and on the website rvlifeintheusa.com. So once you've got everything in here, you're just going to mix it. I turned it over to make sure that everything got combined and then we're going to set the insert into the crock pot and I did like mine outside like I said eight hours on left. Once it was ready I just used my meat chopper and there was absolutely no fat to remove from this pork loin so that is one plus of using this cut of meat. After I did that, I put it into a serving dish to keep warm and then I made my coleslaw. I decided that bowl wasn't big enough so I got a bigger one out. I'm going to put the slaw in there and then add the rest of the ingredients, which I'm also going to put at the end of this clip. 
Once I get everything in the bowl, I'm going to go ahead and mix it up and then put it in the refrigerator. You want to do that for at least 30 minutes to get it nice and chilled or longer is better. I served this alongside a pickle and we had a picnic outside. Here are your ingredients. I hope you give it a try. This pulled pork was really, really good and I'll be definitely making this again. Well, I hope you enjoyed those meals. They were all really delicious, so give them a try if you get a chance. If you made it to the end of my video, please leave me more summer emojis. Went shopping today. Welcome summer. Loving it my dish towels. So yes, summer emojis. I'm going to go jump in the pool. See you next week.